Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yardspirations.com. Today I'm going to share with you how I figure out doing multiples in a stitch pattern. Figuring out the multiple for a stitch count isn't so hard, but it requires you to visualize the pattern so you can break it down physically to see the multiple. For those new to crochet or unsure about stitch multiples, let's quickly just review what it is and then why you might care about it at the same time. Well, what is a stitch multiple anyway? Well, in patterns, there are repeating stitches that form a look on a project. So usually it involves a set of stitches that repeats itself to form the appearance. The trick to multiples is that there has to be balance and proportion. So let's take the analogy of using a bowling alley and we have two gutters in one flat area to throw the ball so that you can hit your pins. So thinking back to crochet now, the gutters are the edges of both sides of your project and the flat area is the stitch multiple that rests between the gutters. So what does the stitch multiple count mean in a pattern? The stitch multiple count, for example, three plus two, this is giving you two pieces of information. Three is the actual number of stitches that repeats the pattern across the project. So this is the area between the gutters if you're thinking back to the bowling alley. So you know that the project has a multiple of three. So the number two is the additional chains needed to keep balance of the chain. So those are your gutters, otherwise known as the edges. So if you were to crochet this chain, you would do the chain like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and keep counting like that until you get to your desired length. And then at the end of the chain, you're going to add your additional two chains in order to bring balance back to your chain. If you prefer to count a larger number instead of doing one, two, three, one, two, three, you can just use a calculator or your mind to do the following. Your larger number should be a multiple of three. So for example, if you go to chain 60, 60 divided by three equals 20 multiple sets. So the two chains at the end then will be added when you're done and this will allow you to create your gutters or your edges of your project easily. There are proper ways to read a multiple stitch count. So let's review that next. Most stitch counts will have a number plus a number, but this is not always the case. So let's take a look at three examples so you can understand the difference. Which multiple stitch count is written incorrectly? Number one, multiple two plus one. Number two, multiple two plus two. Number three, multiple two. So which one is incorrect? So number one is correct. The stitch counts are in twos and then one is added at the end to keep the chain in balance. So this is written correctly. Number two is also correct. The stitch counts are multiples of two and at the end of the chain you just add two. So that's technically correct too. And number three is also correct and the stitch counts are just multiples of two. So if they're all correct, which one is actually wrong? If you guessed it was number two, number two is technically correct but written wrong. There is no difference between number two and three because it's the same thing. So here's what you have to keep in mind. If the multiple number plus the additional number is the same number, it's simply given as one number because it's the same thing. So two plus two is the same thing as saying multiple of two. So to recap, multiples can be something like six plus three or they can just be a single digit of multiple of five. If there is no additional chains needed to bring the chain back into balance, you will not see a plus sign with an additional number added to it. So let's look at length of repeating stitches. In multiples, there can be as little as two or even as high as 20 to 30 stitches. So for example, let's take a look at the cable work afghan and it has a lot going on and I figured out the repeat pattern is actually multiple 21 plus 15. Due to the crossover Celtic knot appearance and the arrow stitches that rest between the Celtic knots plus the edges have something unique, the multiple is a great deal of stitches plus an additional number of stitches in order to bring the starting chain in balance. So to be frank with you, it took me about 30 minutes to figure out with 100% confidence of what these repeats were. So the designer's original starting chain had to be the same number and I had to figure everything out in order to bring it back in balance. The designer had a starting chain of 120 and she hasn't told us the multiple so we cannot know what the repeat stitches are. So we need to review the diagram and actually figure it out. So let's quickly review this and then I'll slow down the process so you can figure out another example later on in today's tutorial. So I had already figured out that it was multiples of 21 and I wanted to verify that I was actually right. And I'm going to show you this process later on in today's tutorial as well. So what I did is that I took the count of 120 and divided by multiples of 21 which gave me 5.7. So now that we know, know that there's a minimum of five repeating sets of multiples. So because we have a 0.7, we know that there are stitches left over, but how many would that be? Here's how you can figure that out. So I take the even number of multiple of five sets times 21, which gives me 105. 
Now I take the designer's total count of 120 and subtract 105 which gives me 15. So this confirms my, my assumptions of being multiples of 21 plus 15. But exactly how did I get that? That's what we're gonna be covering later on in today's tutorial. So now if I want to change the size of this particular afghan, if I keep it in sets of multiples of 21 and when I'm satisfied with the width of it, I can just add an additional 15 and my project will stay in balance and perfect. But how did I get that 21 in the first place? That's what I'm gonna show you next. So let's take a look at a quick pattern and most patterns do not have an existing diagram to look at. So we have to take the written instructions and start and draw a miniature version of what we are reading. First off, when I open the pattern I notice that the blanket is in strips which is not a big deal. But let's just say I didn't want the strips and I wanted to do a solid piece all the way across. So I don't wanna worry about sewing the strips later. So let's look at the instructions and break this down to manageable sizes and then figure out what the multiple is so I don't have to do strips. So on screen are the instructions that we have and what I'm looking for is that I have to see where the multiple is appearing. So when I go to look at the instructions it says with MC which means main color chain 39. Can you tell a actual repeat pattern from that? No you can't. So row number one it says one single crochet in uh, a second chain from the hook and then it says one single crochet in each all the way to the end. There's no repeat pattern there. It's simply the same stitch all the way across. So the repeat pattern does not appear until the second row. But what's the problem with that? Well you have to actually go backwards and figuring out row number two then row number one and then back to the starting chain. So for larger examples including this one drawing out 39 stitches across the page is time consuming but also not necessary. Your goal is to make a miniature of what you see in the instructions. So technically you could draw the full diagram of what you're reading but you don't need to and the reality is, is that you want to crochet as quickly as possible so let's not deny that. So the trick is to start on row number two. Why row number two? Well if you read row number one it was simply one single crochet all the way across. So there's no evidence of a multiple when you are doing that. So you have to jump ahead to row number two where the first evidence of a multiple appears. And in this particular case it's row number two. It doesn't always have to be row number two. It could be row number one, three, five. It doesn't matter. You just have to look for the first time that you can see a multiple is happening. How do you identify where the multiple is anyway? we have to look for the asterisks and that will give you a clear indication of what you need to do. So as a rule of thumb the repeat multiples are usually shown for the first time either in row number one, two, three or four and it depends on the complexity of the pattern as well and you need to find where it first appears and then work backwards from that point to the very beginning of the starting chain. Though you're going to see it on screen in computer format the reality is, is that I do all of this by hand and I usually do a rough diagram first and then I redraw it better as I come to understand what the stitches are doing. It's not always obvious when you're going to write these out of what things are happening until you get further on as you be able to put this thing together. So what I'd like to do is go from right to left and then we just have to draw out row number two. So I want to draw at least three multiples of what's happening inside the pattern. So you really don't know how many stitches it is until you begin to really decipher the pattern. So it's kind of a mystery until we start revealing its secrets. Here's a cool trick. We know that row number one was actually just the same stitch that is underneath these stitches that we're gonna do on row number two. So what I want to do is that as we complete row number two we are going to fill in the information underneath row number two with row number one at the exact same time in order to solve the mystery. So we're putting this together in pieces but not always just straight lines back and forth but sometimes we can just fill in blocks of information as we know it as we go away all the way across. So in row number one all we just have is one single crochet in each stitch. So whatever we do in row number two is going to sit in a single crochet in the row below. So all we need to do is that when you're skipping over stitches you just have to draw in the single crochets to fill in the spaces of where you're skipping in row number one. So if there's no skip stitches in your particular pattern then you don't need to worry about it but just fill it in with the information that is revealing to itself in the rows below. So let's begin to fill this in. So from the right you will draw up a chain of three. It's said to chain three. And so we're gonna draw that and then what we're gonna do is that we know that it's a single crochet in the row below. So we're gonna put a single crochet underneath that and we're gonna work our way to the left. It now says to skip over three stitches which includes the first chain 
and that's the same stitch that the three are into. So now we have to draw three more single crochets into row number one and those are representing the ones that we're about to skip. It says now to double crochet into the next stitch. So knowing that there is no other stitches from that chain three that you did, you know that the double crochet must be leaning over to reach that next stitch. So let's just draw that in. It now says to chain one. So let's add in a chain one and then it says to double crochet in the second missed stitch. So the double crochet must be crossing back over to reach the first stitch uh, on the other side. So let's draw that in. So notice that the asterisk appears in the written instructions. So we know at this point that the instructions are repeating from this point of where it's giving us. So every time we hit to this point we're just gonna repeat over and over. So really what we're looking at already is already a repeat pattern. So let's continue just to verify. It now says to miss the next two stitches. So what you can do is just add in three more single crochets into row number one and you will add the double crochet that is leaning over to the third stitch that you put in there and leaving the two other stitches untouched. Then do a chain one and then you're gonna do a double crochet that is going into the first of the two missed stitches. So now you appear to have the crisscrossing shape once again. So by now you can start to see the multiples appearing. So now you have two. I recommend that you do at least three repeating patterns in order to understand this pattern fully. I do that with every example that you do. Always get a minimum of three. So repeat the asterisk constructions just one more time and then stop. And make sure you don't forget to add in that single crochet in, uh, in row number one under them. And I will give you a few seconds at this point to be able to process this. So on screen you can see that you have three crisscross double formations happening. So instead of doing the entire instructions completing all the way that it showed in the pattern, there is enough evidence now to show you what the multiple is even though you're not quite done. So how do we finish this row? Let me show you that next. So now I want you to read the final instruction on row number two and it says to double crochet in the last stitch. So after you've finished one complete repeat pattern, what this means is that there's gonna be a double crochet right into the next stitch. So what this means on the diagram you're doing is that you will add in one more single crochet stitch in row number one and just fill that in with a regular double crochet to finalize but how are you sure that's actually right? If you were unsure, look on how you started this particular row. You did a chain three which counts as a double crochet and then you have a double crochet leaning over in the very next stitch. So there are no spaces between the first and the second stitch. So that must be mean for the end if the pattern is stated and keeping in balance that the final double crochet is sitting directly beside one of the repeat patterns so that there's no spaces. So it should look like it's in balance just like the gutters on the bowling alley. In certain patterns, sometimes the repeat doesn't always have a balance just like you see it here. Sometimes it can be offset especially when doing uh, moss stitching or anything like that. So it's not always a given that it has to have be perfect balance from one side to the other but in most cases it is. So now we have row number one and two are complete but I think something is missing. So what is that something? Yeah, that's right. It's the starting chain. So let's begin to do that next. When reading back to row number one it stated one single crochet second chain from the hook. That means that there is one chain that is like a builder that is in this particular row. So let me draw it in here to show you. So as you can see the second chain from the hook is actually under the first single crochet. So the first chain is actually beside the single crochet in row number one. So it's like the builder. So to complete the rest of this diagram you need to put one chain under each stitch all the way back to the very beginning. So now that you have a miniature sample of what the pattern repeat is, now you have to figure out what the actual multiple is and what the actual counts are. So let's begin to do that next. So let's break this down. Let's look closely at the pattern and look for commonality in the stitches. You can only count each stitch once as you work your way across. So let's draw a line under the first time the double crochet appears that is leaning over on the left. And then what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna start uh, looking for commonality all the way across that row. Now draw another line under the next time you see that exact same stitch of where it appears again. And then moving down the line again I want you to draw another line straight on down for where that stitch appears again. So by the end of it you should have three lines that are facing down in order to complete this. This is this particular example. You can have others if you wanted if you did more than three repeats at one time. 
So what I want you to do is count the number of stitches that is between the first line down and bef the stitch right before where the next line appears to come down. So don't include that next line that appears down because that's part of the next multiple and not part of this one. So by doing this you can now see that there are three stitches in each grouping. So now you have figured out that the multiple is in sets of three. So we have a multiple of three plus what now? We have to figure out what that plus number is if it, if it exists at all. So now that's what we're gonna figure out next. So now we have to figure out what that plus number is if it exists at all. So now we have to draw two more lines. One on the left hand and one on the right hand side. And what I want you to do is that I want you to draw it down so that you can see what stitches are not actually being used by the existing grouping. And so you wanna do this on both left and right side and see what stitches are not accounted for. So now you'll draw two lines. One on the left hand side and one on the right. Sometimes it doesn't exist on both sides but if any stitches in the chain are not used used that's where you want to draw your lines so that you can see where those are. So you're gonna see that when you do this is that you'll have two chains that have not been accounted for on the left and on the right that you'll see one chain that isn't counted. So we wanna add up the total of chains that are not used and accounted for when we did the multiples the first time. So in this case is there in this particular case there are three chains that are not accounted for. Those three chains are necessary for you to stay in balance. So your multiple is now what? So we already knew that it was a multiple of three plus then we just added up the unaccounted chains that were left over and that was also three. So it's actually a multiple of three plus three but if you remember from earlier this type of multiple cannot be written like this. So because the first number and the additional number are the same this pattern is simply just a multiple of three. And how do we know if that's correct? Well we have to look back to the starting chain. Let's begin to do that. So the designer had us do a chain count of 39. So in order to figure out if three was the actual correct number we take 39 and divide it by three and that gives you an equal number of 13. There's no decimal points. So we know instantly that we were particularly uh, correct. So if it came up as 13.7 or 13.3 or something like that we know that this particular one of multiples three was incorrect and we have to refigure it out. So this is an exact way on how to be able to do all of this and actually uh, have confidence because you have to get back to the original number if you were to figure it out. So to recap now that you have drawn your diagram that you, you can easily use that to follow along when doing this pattern and if anything you understand the pattern now that you've gotten to break it down. Just as a word of caution if you change a multiple project for example you convert a baby blanket and make it into a double size afghan you are not creating a new pattern. So don't assume that this process is a free pass to take an existing pattern and change the stitching counts of the original chain in order to make the pattern your own. It really doesn't work that way when it comes to copyright and trademark licensing. So just watch yourself and make sure that that's not something that you're practicing. So this is a great way for you to be able to change sizes and figure out what those are so you can adapt and customize your crochet to suit your particular needs. So that's it for today. Enjoy the multiples and have fun with the process. Multiples really don't scare me unless they get ultra complicated which rarely happens. But that's it for now and have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again.